Unfortunately for me, the Aeron Classic is going to be an F-tier rating for comfort. I cannot stand the seat, especially the front pad. I do not like the recline. The back without the lumbar is decent, but the lumbar ruins it for me, so F-tier for me on this. I'd probably give it a boost if it had those nice puffy arm pads, which I know some of them do come with, but I don't think it's quite as bad as Ryan says, but it's also not a great chair overall. I think the remastered is better. I'm going C-tier. I finally come around on the classic. I've spent some time sitting in the correct size, which would be a C for me. I found that if you sit in the right size, the frame isn't as big of a problem. And like Greg said, a later model classic is going to have some really nice arms. So I'm going to give the classic a B. So this averages out to a C minus. The Knoll Regeneration Chair is something that I actually do like quite a bit. I think if there was an improvement on the arms, which we just have the height adjustable arms, I could see it ranking a bit higher here. I like the seat. I really like the poly back. I'm going B overall. The regeneration does have a smaller seat and it's a bit on the firm side, but I like how the chair gives you a little bit of movement both in the backrest and the seat. You do have to kind of be okay with that poly back and I personally like those, so I'm going to give this an A. I'm a big fan of the regeneration. I think it's comfortable overall, especially for the price. I think it's got a really good seat. I've got a chance to try the fully adjustable arms. I'd highly recommend those and I like the backrest a lot, but I'm going to give it a B with a B score overall. So next up is my kitchen chair. Now I know a lot of you might actually be sitting in a chair like this and it's not comfortable. Hard seat, hard back, and no flexibility. So this is an F tier. Robert's right, this chair has no padding, no adjustments, no flexibility, but it isn't the worst chair we've ever seen. So I'm giving this mid F tier. Yeah, this is our benchmark for really, really bad. If you rank below this, which chairs have, it's terrible. But I mean, come on, it's a kitchen chair going F tier all around. The Hayworth Vary isn't my favorite chair from Hayworth, but I do think it's pretty comfortable overall. I like the seat. I like the arms. It has a good recline. I wish the back mesh was a little bit more taut. Otherwise, this would probably be an A tier. I'm going to give it a B. I think the Hayworth Vary's seat is just a little bit on the firm side for me, but I do like the backrest. I like the armrest a lot, but much like the Zodi chair where it has sort of an awkward sitting position in neutral, I don't love that part of it. I'm going to go B tier. I feel like the Vary is one of those chairs where if you sit perfectly in it, it's super comfortable. Once you try to move around, you find some problems with it. Like the backrest does hit me a little bit in the upper back. So this is a B for me and a B all around. I really like the OM seating yes chairs headrest, the seat pad, and the squishier arm set that they have. I just wish it had a little bit more aggressive lumbar for me. With that, I'm going to go B tier. I like the seat on the Yes chair. It has kind of a nice contour design, which looks like it would be more restrictive, but it's actually not. It's very comfortable, and I like the backrest kind of nice and wide on the top. So this is a B. I think the OMS is pretty good all around. The seat is cush. The armrests are pretty comfortable, and I do really like the headrest. If the backrest and the seat had a little bit more flexibility and the recline was a little bit smoother, I'd probably give this an A tier, but I'm going to be at a B as well and B overall. The nice thing about the Ikea jar flat is you can go into an Ikea store, test this out for yourself, and find out it's not very comfortable. The backrest is basically mesh wrapped around two bars. This is an F tier. The jar flat is a cheap chair, so we can't expect the world out of it, but I agree with Robert. There's not a lot of great going on with the chair. The armrests are rock hard and terrible, and I cannot stand the recline. I'd be right there with an F as well. The arms on the jar flat feel like they're a joke. I'm going F tier, F tier overall. The CXO is really tough for me to rank on comfort. I've used this chair a ton, and in the short term, I think it's one of the most comfortable chairs that you can sit in because of that thick seat. The armrests are pretty good, and I do like the backrest, but after several years, it started to destroy my back, so I'm going to give this an A tier with an asterisk. Be careful with those thick seats. For me, I don't love the armrests on this chair, and the headrest doesn't fit me, so get rid of that headrest. Keeping the arms, I can only get to B on this one. So at my height, I just can't spend a long time in this chair. The backrest just hits me in the wrong spot. At 6'2", the headrest doesn't work at all. So I have to give this a D, even though I know the seat is really comfortable. That averages out to a B. If anybody's been wondering what happens to the extra parts from the Lamia, it's in a Meep chair, which some have commented on. And honestly, I got to say, this is pretty good. I gave the Amia itself an S tier and I gave the Leap an A tier. So with this combination, I'm going to go A tier on this chair. And guess what? This thing is going to be available soon. Even though we're not necessarily pulling the best parts of the chair, you're still getting an A tier seat from the Leap, an A tier backrest from the Amia. So this is an A for me. Here's the deal. There's a lot of hate on the Steelcase Leap's seat, being too thin, being uncomfortable. This is from very, very vocal people. The vast majority of people love the Leap seat. I'm one of them. You're getting a heck of a combination here with the Leap seat on the EMEA frame. This is A tier all day. 
The hot ignition is hiding a couple surprises. One good surprise is it does have a little bit of flexibility in the backrest, but the seat is pretty uncomfortable with the hard edge on the front. I actually prefer some $300 chairs over this $400 chair. That makes it a D. I don't mind the seat. The armrests are okay. I do really like the backrest, like he mentioned, with that flexibility. And it has a pretty good recline, so I'm going to give this a C. I like to call the Han Ignition the diaper chair just because it makes that crunchy diaper sound in the seat. I'm going to give it a C-. minus. Watch out for that backrest, though. If you're a little bit too tall, you'll hit the frame. Overall, C. The Human Scale Different World is one of my favorite all-mesh chairs, but it's still an all-mesh chair, and so I can't really get above a B on this just due to the seat frame. It's a little bit nicer on that front edge than some other options. I don't love the recline, so I'm going to be at a C for this chair. Yeah, this one's hard for me. For some reason, I bottom out on it, and I hit the mechanism, and that's just a deal breaker. I can't sit in the chair. I'm going F tier. I'm right there with Greg. If I put my weight in this chair too hard, I'll bottom out. But I do love the pivoting backrest, and the arms are pretty nice. This is a C, so this averages out to a C-. minus. I actually really like the neutral chair, and it mainly comes from the fact that the lower lumbar support can be even more aggressive than the ergo human chair, which is pretty unique to this particular chair. I do like the seat as well. The backrest is pretty comfortable in the upper portion, but I just wish there was a wider range on the armrest. I'm going to go B-. minus. I don't love the seat on the neutral chair. I feel myself bottoming out through it too much, but I do like the lumbar. I actually collapse it all the way, but it still feels like plenty of support. This is a C tier chair. The neutral sets it apart with two features, the super ridiculous lumbar and the footrest. The footrest is worthless. I wouldn't even use it. And I'm not a fan of super aggressive lumbar support, so it's not getting any extra points from me there. But I do think it's just an overall decent chair in the seat back and arm. So I'm going to be at a C for this and a C overall. The sale is a unique chair. I've always really wanted to like this more. It's just a little bit on the small side for me, but I do like the seat. It has nice firmness, but also support. So this is a C for me. I like the sail chair overall. It fits me nicely at 5'9". I think the backrest is comfortable, has good flexibility. I do like the armrest with the four-way action and the soft pads. And you get a nice recline for a low-end Herman Miller chair. I'm going to be at a B plus for the sail. Yeah, I think if this one fit me a little bit better, I would like it a lot more too because I think the seat pad is great. The armrest adjustments are really good. So from a Herman Miller standpoint, it's widely adjustable. I just don't fit in that backrest at six foot. So I'm going to give it a C tier. It's a C overall. The Hayworth Zodi LX is a very nice chair. I'm a big fan of the standard Zodi, but I do have to give this one a little bump down just because I don't love the backrest and how firm it is. Everything else though, I do like. So I'm going to give this a B. Yeah, I think the Zodi LX has a lot of potential with it, but like Ryan said, that backrest is just a miss in my opinion. I like a lot of lumbar support, and you really don't even feel the adjustable lumbar support in it, but overall, arms, seat, everything else on it's really nice. I'm going B tier. Yeah, I do like the seat on this chair. It is on the firm side, but I know that I could still be comfortable in it for a long time, and the armrests are pretty nice, nice shape, and they have a little bit of a cush to them, so this is B's from all three of us. The Steelcase Think Chair has that four-way arm set from Steelcase that I absolutely love in the Leap and the EMEA chair. I also think it has a nice flexible seat and backrest, but unfortunately the back's just a little bit too short for me. I'm going to go B tier overall. So like Greg said, this is excellent arms in this chair taken from their premium chairs. The seat is a little on the firm side, but I do really like the backrest. It has a little bit of flexibility to it. This is a B. The Think Chair is very nice overall. Like the guys said, good seat, good arms. Sometimes I do feel that frame in the backrest, and I don't like the hip thrusty recline that it has. So I'm going to have to bring this down a little bit to a B tier, B overall. The Capisco is my go to chair if I want to move my desk up and try a different sitting position. So I love to sit in this chair backwards and use the backrest essentially as a chest rest. This is a B tier chair, but I wouldn't plan on using it all day for sitting. Robert hit the nail on the head. The Capisco is a great tool if you're using it as an accessory to an already set up ergonomic desk setup, but to use it all day is not going to be something you're going to want to do. And so just from a pure comfort standpoint, it's got to be a D tier for me. Yeah, it's definitely not something that you can use all day, but I do like using it with my standing desk for periods throughout the day, but there's a huge miss on a lack of lumbar support and actual arms on this one. So I'm going to go C tier, but it's going to be C overall. The ErgoHuman Tempur-Pedic is the newest addition to the ErgoHuman lineup with some Tempur-Pedic foam in the seat. I'm not really a fan of it, and I think it's about the same comfort level as the mesh seat, which is not great, but I do like the backrest and I like the recline, so I'm going to be at a C tier for this chair. I actually like the Tempur-Pedic seat foam in the ErgoHuman, and this is my preferred version of the chair. I love the mesh backrest. I've always been a fan of that aggressive lumbar support. I'm going to go B tier. I like the contour of the seat, but it's not restrictive. And I also love the firm, but kind of flexible lumbar support. So with a B for me, this averages out to a B. 
I like the arm pads and the lumbar on the branch task chair. The seat pad's pretty decent too. I think overall this chair really doesn't wow you, but it's not supposed to. I'm going to put it right in the C tier. This is my new top pick for a chair under $300. It has a nice tall and wide backrest, and the seat and the arms are pretty nice. So this is a B tier comfort. I think this is a very good chair all around, especially for the price. It's actually my favorite chair in the branch lineup. I like it more so than the two chairs that are more expensive than it. Decent seat, decent arms, back. I'm going to be at a C tier with this, C tier overall. The Leap Work Lounge is a very comfortable chair suited well for an executive's office. It doesn't have the greatest ergonomics and wouldn't be the best for tasking, but it's still a very comfortable chair. I give it an A. The work lounge is a tough chair for me to rank because it's kind of a tweener chair. You can't really use it at a desk setup, so it's tough for it to compete against a chair like the Embody or Aeron. And it's not as soft and comfortable as a lot of loungers like the Eames, so I can't give this an A tier. I'm going to be at a B tier for this. Yeah, just to be clear, this isn't a great chair for tasking, but if you're doing boss type things at the desk, like talking on the phone or just kicking back, or maybe you're the person who asks about a lazy boy all the time, this is a much better and more supportive alternative. I'm going to go A tier. It's A overall. The Herman Miller Varus is going to be one of the lowest priced chairs in their entire lineup, but it's still a pretty decent chair. You get a good recline. I like the arms. The backrest is pretty comfortable, but I'm not a huge fan of the seat. It compresses really fast, and I feel like I'm bottoming out pretty quickly, so I'm going to be at a C tier for this. Yeah, it's hard to rank this chair above the Soji for me from comfort, which is what I'd put it in from a price point perspective. I think the arm pads are a little too firm, and that seat is just too firm for my liking. Backrest, just okay. I'm going to go C tier. I feel like this is a bit of a jack of all trades, but it's not a master of any of them. It has a nice backrest. It's really supportive and has a little bit of flexibility. I give it a B though, so that averages out to a C. Our B Tata Cure Chair is known for its thick padded seat, but for me, that's really not a preference. I do prefer to have a bit firmer seat. I like the backrest and lumbar. I also like the headrest on this one. I'm going to go B minus. The Akira is a nice chair for bigger users. It has a nice big seat, tall, wide backrest. It doesn't allow you to move around a lot in the chair, so I knock it down a little bit for that, but it's still a B. The Akira is a chair that I've kind of come down on a little bit over the past couple years, and Robert kind of hit the nail on the head with the sizing issue. It doesn't fit me perfectly. The arms are a little bit too wide. The backrest is a little bit too big. I do think the lumbar area is comfortable, and the seat is pretty comfortable for that short-term period, but long-term, I do question it. So I'm going to be at a C tier for the Akira, and we're going to be at a B- minus overall. I like to race to the conference room so I can make sure to sit in the Liberty chair. This is a really comfortable chair. I love the pivoting backrest. The mesh is just right to give you a little bit of a floating feeling. This is A tier comfort. I completely agree with Robert on the backrest. I think it has one of the most comfortable backrests in the entire industry, and I really love the seat as well. Super comfortable. The miss for me is going to be the adjustability on the armrest with only height adjustment. They're pretty limited, and I don't like the way that the chair reclines, so I'm going to have to come down to a B tier on the Liberty. This is my second favorite chair from Human Scale. The only real miss being those armrests. And now that I know that Robert's favorite chair in the conference room is this, I'm beating him there next week. I'm giving it a B. It's a B overall. The Ergo Chair Pro is unfortunately one of those chairs where I can't find a lot of upside when it comes to comfort. The seat goes flat within 30 minutes. The armrests are hard and concave, so they're very uncomfortable for me. And I do not like the backrest, including the lumbar or the headrest. So I'm going to be at a D tier for the Ergo Chair Pro. Yeah, Ergo Chair Pro is interesting just because the seat pad looks like it's thick, but it's actually very firm. I don't love the backrest, and the headrest actually pulls the hair out of my head. I'm going D tier. I agree with everything they said. This chair is hard and uncomfortable all around. It's still a tiny bit better than my kitchen chair, though, so that's a D for me and D's all across. The Series 2 from Steelcase has the armrest that I absolutely love, and I also like the backrest. And the headrest, while it doesn't stay in place very well, I think it's comfortable. But the seat is super uncomfortable, and I don't love their weight-activated mechanism. For that reason, I'm just going to go middle of the road here, seat here. The biggest problem with the Series 2 is the seat depth is just way too small for me. Even if I adjust it all the way out, I still have way too much of my legs coming off the front of the chair. I do like the backrest, though, so that helps it out a little bit. It's a C-tier comfort. I'm not a huge fan of the Series 2 from a comfort standpoint, which is pretty weird coming from a steel case chair, but I think the seat is rock hard, the lumbar is way too aggressive for me, and it doesn't have the flexibility that we see in some of their higher end chairs. The hip thrust you recline is the dagger for me, bringing it down to a D tier, and this is going to be a D overall. The lumbar is very aggressive on the side is T50. I found if I moved it all the way to the bottom, it kind of helped get it out of the way, but it still was pretty uncomfortable. And the headrest just never hits me in the right spot. So this is a D tier comfort. Yeah, while the T50 looks like a really nice, amazing chair, it doesn't have the best features for comfort. The seat is a little firm for me and I don't love where the lumbar hits me, but I'm not going to be quite as aggressive as Robert. I'm going to give it a C minus. 
It uses a thin foam piece in the arms. They're extremely cheap. The seat pad's uncomfortable, and the lumbar is kind of a joke. D tier for me, D overall. The Verve is Branch's newest chair and the most expensive chair in their lineup, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I do think it's a little bit overpriced for the comfort that you're getting. The armrests aren't super adjustable, and I don't love the back support, so I'm going to be at a C tier for this. Yeah, I sink to the bottom in the seat foam, which is weird because it's a really thick pad. I don't love the arms. Now, there is one person in the office. She's 4'11". This is her favorite chair. She'd probably even rank it S tier. We'll show you what that looks like here, but for me, I'm going D tier. Just like Greg, I feel myself sink right through the seat of this chair and bottom out. It has very limited adjustments. It doesn't really even go high enough for me to sit in it properly. This is a D from me and a D averaged. The Herman Miller Lino is a chair that I can definitely use, but I do find it to be a bit on the firm side for the arms, seat, and backrest. Nothing really wows me here with this one. I'm going to go C tier. Unfortunately, the Lino is another chair I just don't really fit properly in so it's a little bit hard to rank it just has a very small seat but I do like the backrest so that bumps it up a little bit this is going to be a C the Lino is actually a chair that fits me properly at 5'9", and I've been using it quite a bit in the conference room. The seat is a little bit firm, but I do like the backrest. The armrest could use a little bit more softness to be at a C tier and a C tier overall. So their aggressive marketing would make you think that the X chair is the greatest chair in the world. But unfortunately, poor materials make this a pretty uncomfortable chair. I sink through the mesh and I can hit the frame. I would actually rather sit in my kitchen chair. This is an F. Yeah, the X2 doesn't have a lot going for it. It has that typical pulled mesh frame. It's very aggressive. You can feel the sides. I don't like the backrest, and it's got this really weird forced forward tilt. This is definitely an F-tier chair. Deserves to be there with the Aeron Classic. F-tier for me. I think we need to get the padded seat version in here for the X2 just because we've sat in their gaming version, the Mavics, and it's much improved. However, it doesn't remove that awkward forward sitting position that Ryan mentioned. I can't sit in this one. I'm going F-tier, F-tier overall. The OM truly is a chair that is not talked about a ton on this channel, but it's OM's highest end chair. And to me, sitting in it recently, I think it's a sleeper pick, especially for the price. I really like the seat. The backrest is comfortable, especially with the added jacket that we have for it. You can get a ton of different arms. I'm going B tier on this. This is another polyback chair, but unlike the sale, this one actually fits me. I really do enjoy the polyback, especially the fact that you can adjust the tension in the lumbar to increase it to make it more aggressive. Overall, I'm going to go B tier. I really like the tall backrest on the Truly, and it has plenty of adjustments, so you can really fine-tune it to fit you properly. This is a B for me, and it averages as a B. The Hayworth Assured Chair is a fairly new chair to hit the office. Now, I do think this is a well-built alternative to the likes of the Tacova or the Clatina Millette or even the Branch Task. From a comfort standpoint, though, I think it's just kind of middle of the road. I'm go see tier. I was actually surprised when I first sat in the Assure chair. It has more comfort than I expected. Decent padding on the seat and the armrests were actually pretty nice. It's still just an average comfort though, so this is a C. The Assure is kind of a weird chair because this is the only option in the $300 price range that comes from a major manufacturer, so you do get things like a better warranty, better build, like Greg said, than most of the other options in this price range, but the adjustments are extremely limited, and it's kind of a sizing issue. It's a little bit too big for me, so unfortunately I'd be at a D tier for this, but we're going to be at a C overall. We finally got the Carmen in, and I have to say, I love the backrest on this chair. It really flexes and allows you to move around in the chair. The seat is a bit on the firm side, though, and I don't love the arms. They're fine for tasking, but if you need to push your elbows into them, they're pretty hard. So this is a B for me. I think the Carmen had a ton of potential to be the next best all mesh chair, especially because they put some padding underneath the seat and they tried to make the frame a little bit more flexible. I do wish they would have went as far as to make it as flexible as the backrest because I think the backrest is amazing. The arms, a bit of a miss for me. I'm going to be at a C tier overall for the Carmen. Yeah, I think for mesh chairs, this thing had the opportunity to really be an S tier chair. And if it had the arms like the EMEA or the Leap, for me personally, I probably would have got it there. The reason being is I actually like the seat quite a bit, which is not normal. I don't like to sit in mesh chairs and that backrest is amazing. I'm going to give it an A tier, but it will be a B overall.